Sam, back here with Chris Mortensen as we continue to run through news and notes from around the league. Mort, rain in the forecast in Kansas City today. Could it impact Patrick Mahomes? Now listen, we, uh, we haven't put him in Canton despite <laughs> allegations from some of our friends that we have. But what hasn't Patrick Mahomes proved to us? He hasn't proved that he can play in that inclement, rainy weather. Now he's only had five games. He hasn't had the opportunity to do that. But his hand size was one of the issues for those inclement weather teams that were evaluating him coming out of the draft. And there's the forecast certainly for the game today uh, for the Chiefs. But Patrick Mahomes is a guy that, that hey, he doesn't ha play under center much though. He only four, had four snaps under center at Texas Tech. Yeah. He's only had 40 some snaps under center this year and very few of them or run plays where you have most trouble. And more, here's the weather chart for today in Kansas City. Not to go all double Doppler on you, but you could see storms moving in, a front coming in, and that's going to impact the Chiefs-Jaguars game today as we get a matchup of the league's top-rated offense and the top-rated defense. Also, we have today uh, Brandon Cooks and the Los Angeles Rams. He's developed quite a rapport here with Jared Goff. The trust level between those two has worked out very well. Cooks has become a major deep threat. He's on pace for 1,800 receiving yards. His deep routes have opened up lanes for shorter patterns for Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. He's become a tremendous intermediate route runner for the Rams and a big factor why the Rams right now possess the great offense that they do. Let's stay with the surging uh, Ravens. There's Alex Collins. He lost two fumbles last week. John Harbaugh, the coach, said, hey, it's still his job, but the basic message is you better not fumble anymore. Now, he didn't go around carrying the football around the building all week, but every time he walked around and he saw a coach, a coach would say, high and tight, <laughs> carry the ball, high and tight, high and tight. So, Buck Allen is not a full service time back. If he fumbles again, there's problems there. And then it's time for Hayden Hurst, the rookie from South Carolina, first round pick, who was the star of preseason, returns to the Ravens today. And Joe Flacco has always loved his tight ends. Oh, yeah. And this is the guy that they believe is going to be a Pro Bowl, t Pro Bowl player. They like Mark Andrews, another rookie. They could have multiple tight ends, three or four tight end sets to help out with uh, Miles Garrett on the Browns is going against the Ravens former number one pick, Ronnie Stanley at left tackle. So healthy, uh, respect certainly for Miles Garrett, multiple tight end sets, but also give him some creativity. In the meantime, Joe Flacco hasn't forgotten John Brown is available nope. downfield. And Hurst is expected to start today, Sam. All right, good to know. Thanks, guys. A lot going on in the Lone Star State this weekend. Wait, wait, First wait, wait, Red wait. River, now Cowboys, Texans, Zeke Elliott has. A 38-yard touchdown catch in the Cowboys' win last week against the Lions. And when he finds the end zone, Dallas usually wins. The Cowboys are 15-3 and when Elliott scores a touchdown over the last three seasons, but just 6-6, six and six, including the playoffs, when he doesn't have a TD. Lewis, this isn't breaking news to you. You know they need this guy. Obviously <laughs> relying heavily on yeah. him this year, especially with some of, of the other issues they have at skill positions. But what are you seeing from Zeke right now? Well, you know what, let me just say, let's start what we're seeing from the offensive line and how it's transferring to what Ezekiel is doing. Look, the first two weeks of the season, he averaged about four yards per carry. The past two weeks, over seven. Why? Look, he's been running the ball phenomenally the past two weeks, but the offensive line has really picked up their play. And when you look at it here on this breakdown, they are getting people off the ball. Here is against Seattle. They're going to pull both guards. And they're going to get out here on the perimeter. They're going to down block the front side. You're going to see everybody get a hat on a hat here. And then you see it's one-on-one. -on -one. Connor Williams in the hole against Bobby Wagner. And then you see Ezekiel with great patience and vision. And then he gets it vertical. And this is what I love. You see how he's finishing now? Ezekiel's running with an attitude. Here, it's just a little bit of an outside zone. You see everybody has got man on man. One guy gets beat. Ezekiel still is able to make him miss behind the line of scrimmage. And then he's off to the races again. And now, again, he's down the sideline. And look at what he does. He's looking up defensive backs and going, here, come get some of this. And people don't want any of that right now. So you saw an attitude change on the offensive line. Now you see Ezekiel hitting the line of scrimmage with authority and getting to the second and third level. And he's telling defensive backs, you don't want to deal with me. And then last week, you also saw him catch that long, that long pass on what is a slot fade. He lined up in the slot and just took off, faded to the boundary, and just outran the, the, the coverage defender and made a nice catch. They're using him in every way they can. And all that's doing is open up things now for Dak because teams are going to have to stack the box to slow him down. And then there's just one-on-one coverage on the outside. So 
Just like when they drafted him, Sam, they knew that he had a trickle-down effect on everyone else as yeah. long as the offensive line was doing their job, and you're starting to see that now. That obviously looks really good, but yeah. how does that play today <laughs> against J.J. Watt, who, by the way, I think it's five sacks in two games? Yeah. Something ridiculous. How does that impact what he's doing? Well, what, what happens is as long as you're running the ball effectively, the play-action pass game comes off of that, and defense alignment will tell you, when you are two-dimensional like that, you can run and run play-action. It makes defenders slow down. It makes J.J. have to play the run in the pass, which means he can't just take off upfield and start rushing the passer. So, again, everything that he does has a trickle-down effect on everyone else, and it will have an effect on J.J. Watt in a negative way, so they need to keep him going. So you're on the Cowboys today is what you're telling me. Absolutely. I Something like them. that. There's I a did. pick for you. Yep. All right, a whole lot more coming up on Countdown. Yeah, we might have mentioned Odell Beckham. He sounds off on the Giants. I promise.